Hi, I'm Bill Yo, and thanks for checking out my latest film, Wild Africa. In this film, we're going to visit Tanzania, the largest country in East Africa, and home to Lake Victoria, the second largest lake in the world. Tanzania is also home to Kilimanjaro, the highest summit on the continent. In this film, we're going to visit three national parks, Tangiere, Lake Manyara, and the Goro Goro Crater. I hope you enjoy it. Just so you know where we're going, this map shows you where Tanzania is. And the next map shows you where the Ngorogoro Crater, Lake Manyara, and Taranjara National Parks are located. Since Toyota built the first Land Cruiser in 1951, it's been the primary tool to access Africa's rugged wilderness to get close to the continent's most iconic animals, such as the frolicsome olive baboon. Large troops are a common sight in Tarangir National Park, where they can be found living in grasslands or resting in treetops. Olive baboons are named for their thick, lush coat, which, at a distance, is greenish-gray. The baboon is easily identifiable by its dog-like muzzle and can weigh as much as 110 pounds. The infant's grasp grows stronger by its first week and it's able to cling to its mother's fur by itself. Olive baboons are omnivorous and eat virtually anything it finds. Notoriously quarrelsome, the scars on their faces tell the true story. Their large incisors allow them to actively hunt prey, such as small rodents and occasionally small antelope, sheep, and goats. A staple of their diet consists of succulent, nutrient-rich leaves that they voraciously eat like they haven't eaten in days. But they're ever so careful to reject the poisonous berries that could kill them or make them sick and vulnerable to predators. Baboons certainly aren't modest, and it's easy to identify them once you see their full moon flash in the bush and in public. Mothers hold infants the same way humans cradle their babies, and within weeks, the little ones are frolicking independently. Baboons also inhabit rainforests, such as this one in Lake Manyara National Park, a bird watcher's paradise. This young couple relax in dappled sunlight, picking each other's coats clean of parasites, while their little one, adorned with a black natal coat and bright pink skin, scampers up and down trees. Females are the primary caregivers of infants, but males also play a role. Although, when it comes to baboons, it's usually not clear who the actual father is. Fortunately, that doesn't matter because the entire troop typically looks out for each other's offspring. It's only about a two hour drive from Lake Manyara to Taranjara National Park, famous for its diverse wildlife and population of over 550 bird species. The 1100 square mile park gets its name from the powerful Tarangir River, the primary water source of the ecosystem. The eastern water buck has impressive leer-shaped horns and is easily identifiable by the white ring on its rump. Some people say it looks like it just sat on a freshly painted toilet seat. Water buck are smart to stick close to impala due to their sensitive hearing. And warthogs know a good thing when they see it too. It's easy to spot an impala because of the two black stripes on their rump. One might say they sat on a freshly painted black toilet seat known for their ability to leap over nine foot high barriers and across 30 foot roads, impalas are the Olympic athletes of the plains. Only males have horns and females stick close together in large herds. 
People travel from all over the world to Tarangere to see the park's large population of elephants, the mystical baobab tree, and birds like the lilac-breasted roller. The park couldn't sustain such a healthy elephant population without a substantial water source like the Taranjar River. And of course, elephants need thousands of acres of grassland to graze. Hours of four-wheel and rough dirt roads and searching with field glasses, the first elephant was spotted under a small baobab tree. A herd of elephants often walk single file, the matriarch leading the way, followed by her siblings, then their offspring, that occasionally hold on to its mother's tail by their trunk for guidance and security. Males live a predominantly nomadic and solitary life and prefer to roam alone. Elephants eat bark, leaves, and roots, but the primary staple of their diet is grass, which they spend up to 16 hours a day foraging for in order to obtain the 300 to 400 pounds of food they require each day. Their most useful limb is their trunk, a combination of their nose and upper lip. It's super strong and sensitive enough to pick up a blade of grass with its two little trunk tip fingers. Elephants' trunks hold about four gallons of water and it can instantaneously inject it directly into its mouth. It also doubles as a snorkel when it walks on the bottom of riverbeds. And if the water gets too deep, no worries, they can swim close to 30 miles. This large female's skin is one inch thick, but it's extremely sensitive, especially to the sun and insects. For protection, elephants spray water on their bodies, then throw mud and dirt on it with surprising precision to make their homemade sunscreen. African bull elephants can grow up to 13 feet tall and weigh 16,000 pounds. This small Ellie is about the size of a land cruiser. When elephants flap their huge ears, air cools blood vessels close to the skin surface that radiate excess heat away from the body and throughout their circulatory system. Both female and male African elephants have tusks, but only male Asian elephants have tusks. The elephant's tail is constantly moving to create a breeze that keeps away biting insects. These haunting baobab trees are the ideal elephant rub, and in areas with high elephant concentrations, most of the bark is gone from about eight feet high to the ground. But most importantly, the trees store water inside their trunks, and during the dry season, elephants obtain water by ripping off and eating the soft bark. Afterwards, elephants transport the seeds over long distances in their stomachs, thus contributing to the dissemination of baobabs. Obscure symbiotic relationships like this are what keep ecosystems healthy. Massive elephants like this communicate through the ground by foot stomping, creating a low frequency wave that can travel and be heard 20 miles away. Research suggests that elephants are one of the most intelligent, social, and empathetic animals on the planet, known to shed tears and bury their dead. Unfortunately, their population is declining, and in Africa, they are listed as vulnerable, and in Asia, endangered. Let me tell you the story about how the Ngorogoro crater formed. Two and a half million years ago, this mountain the size of Kilimanjaro, yeah, at least 19,000 feet high, started accumulating gases beneath it. Eventually, these gases ignited, and this mountain erupted and imploded in on itself, forming a giant caldera. The floor of the caldera is 100 square miles flanked by 2,000 foot walls. To get to the crater lip, you need to ascend 2,000 feet up a dirt road through picturesque farmland maintained by the beautiful and friendly Maasai, an ethnic group that reside in Kenya and Tanzania. This is a typical Maasai homestead. 
The route to Ngorogoro takes you through the mystical clouds of the Northern Highlands Forest Reserve. Tolkien-esque trees with outstretched arms seem to emerge from the mist, where animals act like sentries waiting to see who enters. The lush rim of the crater as the cloud cover recedes, you get your first glimpse of one of the most amazing natural features on Earth. The descent to the crater floor is about a 20 minute drive down a narrow, winding dirt road with amazing views across the deep green, pancake flat, 100 square mile floor. Tree climbing lions are rare and mysterious and can only be found in a few locations in Africa. Biologists speculate that they begin climbing trees for a few reasons. First and foremost, to get away from irritating insects. During the rainy season, the ground gets infested with breeding tsetse flies that would feed on lions and drive them insane. High tree limbs, typically of the species fig, sycamore, or acacia, provide a safe haven for the most feared animal in Africa. Another key reason lions begin climbing trees was to escape the scorching heat on the ground. And judging by this marvelous specimen, it's the most comfortable bed in the house. When you head down into the caldera and you look across the great expanse, you can see hundreds and hundreds of animals all grazing together. Wildebeest, impalas, zebras, all in close proximity. And they found that there's strength in numbers because some have better eyesight, some have better hearing, some are faster, some are stronger, and they all keep an eye out for each other. The crater floor resembles the Great Plains. And based on the density of animals, you'd think you were on a cattle ranch, except for the diversity of species grazing. The helmeted guinea fowl, easily identified by the ivory-colored protuberance on its head can barely fly and prefers to walk or run, often over six miles a day, while searching for tubers, seeds, and invertebrates. The crater area has two wet seasons, October to November for brief rainfall events and March to May for long events. It's hard to believe these conditions were in January, but the unseasonable rain certainly made everything lush and ripe and wildlife was everywhere including the warthog with its large upward curving tusks and mostly hairless body, it can be a little intimidating, especially when one sees how aggressive and confident they can be. In the crater, it seems like they don't have a care in the world but to gorge themselves on grasses and plants. Although, in the crater, eventually, everything becomes a meal. The hogs get their name from the protrusions that look like warts on the sides of their faces. This bony cartilage protects their face when they fight. Drivers often risk getting stuck trying to get clients a good look at waterbirds. The yellow-billed stork occurs primarily in Eastern Africa and stands about three and a half feet tall. Their diet consists of small freshwater fish, crustaceans, aquatic insects, and frogs, all swallowed whole. Their feeding strategy is to disturb the bottom of the water body with their bill and feet to bring any food sources to the surface. Then, the incredibly fast snapping action of their bill seals the deal. During the breeding season, the yellow-billed stork's colors become more vivid and their plumage becomes a beautiful pink on the upper wings and back. This beautiful example dries itself in the sunlight and plucks and preens its feathers to increase its chances of finding a mate. Herons often feed with yellow-billed storks. The cruiser's pop top provides an exceptional platform for wildlife viewing. These highly social plain zebras are herbivores and are the most common of the three zebra species. The population has been estimated to be around 750,000. For safety, zebras stay in tight groups because lions are colorblind and think the stripe pattern is grass. Like humans and their fingerprints, each zebra has a different pattern of stripes, so each individual is unique. Zebra's primary coat color is white with black stripes, but underneath their coat, their skin is black. 
Zebras can rotate their ears in almost any direction. This ability is used to communicate their mood with other zebras. At times, you might think a land cruiser wasn't the best tool for the job, but in Africa, all of them are outfitted with snorkels that reposition the air intake for the engine to above the vehicle. These lesser flamingos are the smaller of the two species and can be found in flocks of 1,000 or more. Flamingos are attracted to the salt lake in the middle of the crater because of the abundance of dead algae, a food source for them that eventually turns their plumage pink. The birds have uniquely adapted bills that filter their food as they feed with their heads upside down. Another common East African wetlands bird is the great white pelican, known to have the second widest wingspan of all birds, measuring up to 12 feet wide. Thompson's gazelles are affectionately known as Tommies. They're easy to identify by their black side stripes. Although they're very fast, they're not quite fast enough to get away from the cheetah, who favor it over most other game. The Tommy's diet consists of grazing on fresh short grasses, and they won't hesitate to bed down for a nap in the middle of the day. The Grant's gazelle is much larger with bigger horns and does not have the sporty side stripes. Instead, it has a white rump. Heading back into the wetlands in search of the most regal bird in East Africa. The stunningly beautiful gray crowned crane is easy to identify by its bristly golden crown and its bright red inflatable neck pouch. These cranes are omnivores and use the same tactic the yellow-billed stork uses to capture prey. By using their feet to flush out insects, frogs, and fish, so they can quickly snap them up. It's common for these cranes to follow gazelles and antelopes so they can quickly grab prey the herbivores have disturbed. They spend their entire day eating and at night sleep high in the trees for safety. These cranes are known for their impressive mating dance that includes jumping and bowing. Perhaps the heaviest bird capable of flight, the massive Cory Bustard can weigh up to 40 pounds with a wingspan of nine feet. They're known to be shy and will run instead of fly at the first sight of danger. Colorful Egyptian geese join the fray. Legendary for their annual 1,000 mile migration in the Serengeti, the largest of antelopes, the wildebeest, is another herbivore that predominantly eats short grass. Both males and females have horns, a white beard, and a horse-like mane. The largest can weigh up to 600 pounds. The Ngorogoro Crater's lush grass, reliable water, and expansive plain provide the wildebeest with the ideal setting to flourish. This is a very special time of year when their young are brought into this competitive and dangerous environment. After an eight and a half month gestation period, females all give birth within two to three weeks in the middle of the herd for protection from predators. The average calf weight is about 45 pounds. Calves are able to walk and run within minutes of birth, and those that can't are quickly grabbed by spotted hyenas. They nurse for 10 days until they supplement it with grass. Both males and females continually encourage the newborns to move because they know their lives depend on it. Some years there can be up to half a million calves born at the start of the rainy season. This is advantageous to the wildebeest because predators can only eat so many in a given time period. This wobbly little newborn is taking in its first sights and sounds, and its father is following it around, nudging it to get it moving, training it so it can keep up with the herd 
on the upcoming migration through the Serengeti. Newborns identify their mother by her scent. Female calves will stay with their mothers and other females in their herd for life. Within the first year, male wildebeest take off and join bachelor herds that stick close together, often in groups of a thousand or more. Wildebeest spend the hot middle part of the day resting with their families, the perfect time for this little one to test its new legs. It won't be long before it can run at speeds up to 50 miles per hour. The animals know how important it is to condition the newborn as frequently as possible. Family members take turns forcing the newborns to move about. This one was fortunate to be born with springs in its legs, increasing its chances of living up to 20 years old. If the newborn sticks close to its mother and female relatives, its survival rate for the first month is over 50%. Born light brown, the young will begin to acquire their adult color after two months. As with many species, the calves are super cute, but this phase passes quickly, and within months, you have one of the fiercest looking animals on the planet. The wildebeests are not alone on the plains. Often nearby are the unpredictable and dangerous Cape Buffalo. Some estimate that it gores or tramples over 200 people a year. The critically endangered and solitary black rhino can also be found in the crater in very limited numbers. Although not listed as critically endangered like the black rhino, the lion population is also declining throughout Africa by as much as 52% and Tanzania is home to one of the most robust populations. Female lions do the lion's share of the hunting and are at the pinnacle of the food chain. Known to sleep for up to 20 hours a day, they could be considered lazy. But if you had to chase down and digest 25 pounds of meat a day, you might sleep a little longer too. Male lions can weigh 500 pounds and grow up to seven feet long. Their mane darkens with age and research suggests that larger, darker manes attract more females. Breeding takes place no more than once every two years. Females only have a three to four day window. Within this time frame, a couple mates every 15 to 20 minutes. Often up to 50 copulations within a two day period. The process is not an enjoyable one, and instinctually at the end, the male lion bites the back of the female lion's neck. This often results in a swipe of her sharp claws, but within minutes, the couple are lounging in the sun. Not as exciting to watch as lions, the lazy hippo rests by the water's edge. Sykes blue monkeys, not shy in the least, approach humans hoping for a handout. Vervet monkeys are easy to identify by their black mass surrounded by white fluffy hair. But the real showstopper is the magnificent Maasai giraffe. There is nothing in this world like the giraffe, with feet the size of dinner plates, a blue tongue, the height of many buildings, and each with a pattern unique to themselves. The patches provide excellent camouflage, but also work as individual heating pads throughout their body. They consume acacia tree leaves, which provide them with the calcium and protein they need to sustain their growth. No trip to Africa is complete without seeing a giraffe. This hammer cop naturally blends into its surroundings, keeping it safe from predators. Ostrich are the largest flightless bird and can run 43 miles an hour. 
Saddle-billed storks are the giraffes of the bird world, standing over five feet tall with a wingspan range from eight to nine feet wide and weighing up to 16 pounds. In the first interaction, the female shows her dance off to the male, who doesn't seem interested in the least. Quickly, the male catches on and breaks into his very best routine, complete with nest building gestures, glances at the sky, suggesting they take off together, 360 degree spins, and butt wiggles. Not much different than you'd see at a high school dance. Their mating dance is very important because the birds are monogamous, which means they only do it once in their lives if they do it right. You can clearly see the distinctive red patch on their chest that darkens in the mating season. The importance of good nest building skills is obvious as the male continuously picks up sticks to display the ability. Some storks have traveled hundreds of miles to find a mate and will give it all they have to be successful. It's hard to believe these birds are shy, but this time of year, it's all or nothing. If the dance works, they will mate in the same nest every year for the rest of their lives.